Come join Melissa and her guests on the Chats from the Blog Cabin podcast. From North Carolina, this podcast will have you feeling like you've known these folks for years. Listen in as they chat about life, culture, current events, and more, all with a special Southern flair. Curl up with your favorite beverage and get ready to be entertained. Tune in now for a unique experience that's fun and insightful. Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Chats from the Blog Cabin and welcome back Bridget. Bridget was on a couple, this is what, your third time on Chats from the Blog Cabin? Yep, third time. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. Last time she was on, she actually did a really cute little recipe for a Pilgrim Tats from the unofficial Hocus Pocus cookbook for kids. And today we're not doing a kid's well, we could do a kid's version, but today we're not focusing on kids. We're focusing more on the adult drink with New Year's coming around. Correct? That's right. I've got a recipe from my first book, actually, a cocktail book. It's called XOXO, a cocktail book, and it's an unofficial uh, book for fans of Gossip Girl. Okay. Before we get into creating whatever you're going to create today, tell us a little bit about yourself for people that are new to listening? Sure. Uh, my name is Bridget Thorson. I have written three pop culture cookbooks. The first, um, the XOXO Gossip Girl cocktail book, and then two cookbooks dedicated to the fandom of Hocus Pocus. So that's the unofficial Hocus Pocus cookbook. And most recently, the unofficial Hocus Pocus cookbook for kids. Um, I am a writer and editor and publishing exact living in new york and i'm also a mom to a two and a half year old wow you got a lot going on <laughs> <laughs> so what inspired you to write this cook the first cookbook um for gossip girl so this really came about in i believe it was 2019 and I was chatting with my editor and we heard that the Gossip Girl reboot was finally happening. There'd been a lot of talk about it um, and it was finally greenlit. And we decided we wanted to do a project around that. I watched Gossip Girl when it came out, you know, back when I was in college. So it was kind of a like nostalgic sort of show mm -hmm. for me. It brought back, you know, all those nights with my college roommate and just a lot of fun memories. Um, so, you know, I was like, I would really love to work on this project. And when we were thinking about like, what kind of book would make sense for Gossip Girl? I mean, it took us no time at all to decide it had to be cocktails. I mean, yeah, booze on that show is like, it's a, practically a character <laughs> on the show. So, um, we just thought that would be fun to play into like the glitzy New York city, um, kind of scene. And uh, it went from there. I wrote the book in the winter of 2019. And it came out in September 2020. Okay, and you're going to create a recipe for us today, correct? That's right. So I am going to put together an old fashioned or as we call it in the book, a New York spectator. So all of the recipes in the book are um, themed to a character of the show or an event that takes place in the show or something like that. So all of the names of the cocktails have Gossip Girl themed names. And then like the head notes, the introductions are very much um, play into the voice of Gossip Girl. You know, I, I got into my Gossip Girl <laughs> mode and wrote in her voice and kind of like commented on different things that happened in the show. So this drink is um, for Nate. If anyone is familiar with Gossip Girl, um, Nate is kind of like the straight man on the show. He's, you know, a little, uh, he's the most, we'll say like honorable of <laughs> the characters, as honorable as you can be on Gossip Girl. Um, but he eventually, you know, takes over this uh, newspaper, the New York Spectator. And so that is what I decided, you know, an old fashioned really seemed to me to kind of fit his personality and what I thought he might like, what kind of his go-to drink might be. And um, where I am in New York, it's quite chilly today. So I thought a nice bourbon based drink uh, would hit the spot <laughs> now that we're in December. So um, 
what I love about this is it's super easy, but you can really take it up or down as much as you want. Um, you can get really fancy with your cocktail shaker and a really, really nice bourbon, or you can keep it more every day, go with a simpler bourbon um, and just mix it up right in your glass, which is what I'm gonna do today. So I have my cocktail glass um, and I have already crushed one sugar cube in here. I prefer to use sugar cubes, but if you rather, you can also whip up a very basic simple syrup and do a little dash of that. Um, but I just think the, the sugar gives it a much cleaner uh, feeling. So I've crushed that in here, and then I'm gonna add a couple ounces of bourbon. So my, You're good. Uh, okay, <laughs> my uh, bourbon of choice for a cocktail is Four Roses. Um, for something just to sip on, I like, you know, something a little more elevated, but Four Roses is great as a cocktail base. So got a couple ounces of bourbon in here. I'm gonna take a couple dashes of bitters. Just like, just like that, two to three drops in there. Then for garnish and also for flavor, I've got a little bit of, you can use grenadine or this is just maraschino juice from a maraschino cherry jar and a maraschino cherry in there. And that gives it like a really nice sort of candy uh, cherry flavor. And then I'm gonna take a bit of orange peel now, if I wasn't on camera, I would flame this orange peel, which just means squeeze it over a flame and get all that juice to kind of ignite. But I didn't want to risk that on the camera <laughs> in case it went wrong. <laughs> so instead, I'm just going to take the orange peel. Um, and a lot of times you'll see it like twisted on the side of the glass, um, but then you don't really get any of the flavor. So I'm just going to take this and use it like as a spoon, kind of stir that up and really get the oils from the orange in there and then just leave it in there. You could also do an orange slice if you rather. Mm. Um, but I think the peel is really nice and simple. Um, and that's it. That is an old fashioned a New York spectator for today. <laughs> and um, if you prefer your whiskey drinks cold, you can put an ice cube in there. I actually like to drink them room temperature. So I'm not going to do that for this one. Um, but that is certainly a very common uh, thing to put a nice big, ice cube in there. For cocktails, the bigger the ice cube, the better, uh, because it mm. melts slower and doesn't water down your drink quite as fast. So if you want to sip something really slowly, uh, from the beginning to the end, you'll get roughly the same flavor and not as much of the watering down. So that's it. That's a New York Spectator for you. A really nice drink for the start of winter. And is there an alternative, excuse me, for people who don't like to drink? Yes, absolutely. So um, within the book, most of the cocktails do have alcohol in them, but there's a lot of easy substitutions. And then there is a special section at the back that is all mocktails from the get-go. Um, because, you know, we can't forget for a lot of the show, the characters <laughs> were underage. So <laughs> I did include some mocktails. But if you want to try an old-fashioned, but you don't want to drink, um, there's a couple of things you can do. First, you can easily find non-alcoholic bitters. Uh, bitters do have a small amount of alcohol in them, so you'll want to find non-alcoholic ones there. And that's just a um, like a syrup of like spices and fruits. Mm -hmm. um, and then instead of the bourbon, you can try black tea. So you can, mm -hmm. you know, any black tea of your choice, um, but brew that up, let it cool to room temperature, and you can use that as your base. That will give you um, the tannin and the spiciness. It, of course, won't be exactly the same. Um, but it will give you that savory, spicy, um, tannic base to start with. Um, and if you don't want to try that, there every year there are more and more non-alcoholic spirit options. Um, so I've tried non-alcoholic gin, non-alcoholic whiskey, um, and they get better and more like the real thing all the time. So you can absolutely try a non-alcoholic bourbon um, to get you that flavor there. Are all the recipes in the book that simple to make? Because that seemed like super simple. Like you had it made within like what, less than five minutes. Mm -hmm. All of the recipes are pretty much this simple. Uh, occasionally you'll need something that, that does need a simple syrup and then you have to, you know, get the stove involved. 
occasionally there's like an egg white, but honestly, cocktails can really feel intimidating, but they, they don't have to. At the end of the day, uh, it's just different liquids <laughs> that you're pouring in. You know, you're not baking anything. <laughs> Nothing has to go through, you know, a chemical change, <laughs> like mm-hmm. a cake or anything like that. Um, so a lot of, you'll see if you flip through the book, the steps are so short and many, it's just combine all of the ingredients. You know what I mean? So it really is, um, it really can be that simple. And I really wanted the book to be that simple. You know, the book is really about the fandom of Gossip Girl and the fun and, you know, like having a cocktail while you're rewatching your favorite episodes. Um, And I think the best way to do that is to make it not stressful. So that was, Mm -hmm. that was my aim. I love that. Now you mentioned in the earlier the bourbon that you chose for this one would be different than what you would normally drink. So what, why would, why did you choose that particular bourbon? Um, I like four roses for cocktails because it is on the cheaper side. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So if you're making cocktails um, where you're going to be putting other flavors in, you don't necessarily want something expensive or super unique, you know, with like, you know, a whiskey that has a lot of peat flavors or anything like that. Um, The Four Roses is affordable, but still good. You could absolutely sip it on its own. Um, But then also because you're adding the flavors in, you know, with the orange and the cherry, the flavors of the Four Roses really complement those flavors nicely. So I like how all of those things come together. Um, But if I was sipping on a bourbon or a whiskey, you know, just on its own. Um, that's a little bit less common, a little bit more for a special occasion. So I would choose something, um, you know, maybe uh, from Scotland or, you know, something that um, had a little bit more of its own unique flavor. Is, does it, is this a sweet drink or is this a, more of a, a sour drink? Because you have the bitters, but you also have the orange and, and the cherry juice. Mm-hmm. This would definitely air more on the sweet side, but it's not fruity. So it's not going to be fruity like a strawberry daiquiri or something like that. But the natural sugars from the cherry and the orange and then that little sugar cube that we crushed at the bottom, Mm -hmm. that is going to make it more sweet than sour. Now, you mentioned earlier, and I'm glad you mentioned the sugar cube. You mentioned earlier the sugar cube cube, and some people make use simple syrups. What's the difference in that? So simple syrup is just uh, sugar and water that's heated up um, and combined into a syrup texture. Um, I, I find that for me, simple syrup can be a little bit harder to get the correct amount. Um, it can be a little harder to, to measure out. Um, and I don't like my old fashions to be too sweet. So if I get a little too much, if the concentration is a little off, um, I find for me and in my palate, it's harder to get exactly the cocktail that I'm looking for. But a sugar cube is, you know, always the same <laughs> and uh, much easier to, to kind of do like a portion control there. So that's my preference. Um, but simple syrup is super simple to make and you can keep it in your fridge for a couple of weeks. Um, so if you're having, you know, people over, if you're having a party and everybody's having these drinks, um, it might be easier for you to whip up a batch of, of simple syrup and do that way. It all comes down with like so many things with cocktails. It all comes down to preferences. <laughs> That's true. Now, how much bourbon did you use? I don't remember you said it or if you said it or not. I used two ounces for this. So your proportions can be. Um, you know, if you're making these often, you'll kind of figure out what the right amount is for you. Uh, but for here, I did two ounces of bourbon and then I did three little drops of bitters. And then the maraschino juice, um, I did like one, uh, one spoonful of that. So. Now, in the book, there's very exact measurements for all of the cocktails. Um, you can measure it out very exactly, but... I didn't want to be doing that on camera. So I pre-measured everything. (laughs) I love that. 
Um, also, too, you mentioned something about setting the orange on fire. fire. What exactly does that do? <laughs> I understand why you didn't want to do it because it was like, whoa, no, I don't want to. I'm not fire <laughs> on camera. I don't blame you on that one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, a lot of it is kind of just a fun party trick, <laughs> but it does kind of toast the oils a little bit in the peel. So you kind of you take your match and you squeeze the peel and it gets a little bit of that juice and you squeeze it into uh, the glass. And as it passes through the flame, it toasts that. And then you run the flame along the peel um, just to kind of very lightly sort of caramelize the juice that's on there. It adds just a little bit of an extra dimension to the flavor. Um, but I would say it's 70% just a cool party trick. <laughs> I love that. Cool party tricks, which which is great. Unless you've taken imbibed more than you're supposed to, then it might turn into a dangerous party trick. Yes. Would only recommend on the first cocktail of the evening. After that, <laughs> keep those flames away. <laughs> <laughs> and where can people buy XOXO? You can buy this book wherever you prefer to buy books. It's, of course, available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble, as, many, as well as many indie stores. So if you want to shop local, you can go to IndieBound or Bookshop and put in the title, and it'll tell you where you can order it um, to support your local store. But, yeah, really, however you prefer to buy your books, you can get it there. I love that. And I know I asked you, you said you, if you ever had to write another book, it would be on Psych. I remember that. But have you ever thought about doing one like, I had a thought in my head and I totally lost it. Like Sex in the City, like something, like, were you not a fan? Um, That would be a great book. I never watched Sex in the City. Um, it came on, I think I was like a little bit too young when it came on the first time to really understand the character's experience. And then just as an adult, I never rewatched it. I have a friend though, who would be the perfect person to write a Sex in the City cocktail book or food cookbook too. Um, she's a big fan, so I'll have to give her that idea. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, a lot of people, especially with the reboot and everything with the new seasons coming on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they did the first season and then I think it was renewed for a second season of the reboot, right? Yeah, I think so. the second season's already air. I don't know if they renewed for oh. the third, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I'm out of the loop on Sex in the City then. <laughs> so do you have any other books coming down the pike for you or you think you're pretty much? Nothing planned. Um, but of course, the first time I came on your show for my Hocus Pocus cookbook, I said the same thing. And then just two years later, I had another book. So we'll see, you know, where the wind and trends take me. <laughs> um, but as of now, no other plans for any future books. And if you do write a future book... You're welcome to come back on again and share. I will be here, no doubt. <laughs> so, guys, the 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 book is called XOXO, a cocktail book, an official Gossip Girl fan book. And Bridget, thank you so much for coming on and for sharing the book with us and sharing a, a New Year's Eve cocktail with us. Thank you so much for having me again. It was wonderful, as always. Um, and cheers. Cheers. Oh, I have my propel. Cheers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Until the next chat from the Block Cabin. Bye.